What's going on everybody? I hope you're doing fantastic as always. Welcome back. Today we are going to be continuing with landscapes. We last left off with adding foliage and before that water. And today we are going to be uh, doing landscapes a different way to make uh, the foliage and water pop a little bit more and to make your map itself stand out so here's how we're going to do it we're going to be using something called height maps now i'm no image expert i'm not going to say i am so there are a lot of ways to get these files today i'm just going to show you one way that works very well for me personally so let's go ahead and get into it we right now are just in our YouTube project, and if you have not watched the previous videos, you can go ahead and catch up on those and get to this point, or alternatively, we are just in a third person project template, as you can see here. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually leave our editor open and just hanging out for the moment and we need to go on over to google you're going to need to look in the description for this link we will be we'll be using a google docs to convert a google maps image into a height map image so here's how we're going to do that you'll need uh, this google docs from the description and just anywhere on google maps you can see i have just kind of picked uh, the four corners here, which is a spot in the US uh, where four states touch. I accidentally randomly scrolled in here, so this is what I picked. And then what you're going to do is just take the coordinates, just go ahead and control A, control C, and you're going to put that uh, right here. So what you're going to do is click here in this uh, cell, control A and control V to put it um, in. And make sure you don't type in a place, because otherwise you're going to get a different... Uh, I mean, you can type in a place, but just make sure your address looks exactly like this when you put it in. Otherwise, it won't work right. Uh, Alright, so then as soon as you put that cell, populate it, it spits out a uh, grayscale image. And then don't zoom in or out, because that's going to mess with things. Just right-click, hit Save Image As, and name it whatever you want. So, for instance, if you zoom out, you can see this is actually a grayscale image. If you know geography, you're looking at it's the United States and Mexico. And here's Canada up here, Alaska over here. This is the East Coast over here, Florida down here. So this is the uh, Rocky Mountains. Anyways, now you're totally lost and we have no idea where the Four Corners is. That's why I said don't scroll out. But, now that we have our grayscale image, or height map, basically, we can go to Landscape, New, since we already have one. Then import from file. This is the height map file. Now the one I downloaded is called download four. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that in. And we could adjust where it's at. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's move it. Maybe. So I don't want it. The reason I'm moving it is I don't want it to be above the base. I think that'll work. Okay, as you can see, it's much larger because we're going like a real scale here. Yeah, so this might take a second to import. Okay, so we successfully imported. You can see it's huge. Now before we go check it out, uh, let's go back to selection mode. Find our landscape two or one. Uh, depending on if you have two or one. Yeah, for us right now, it is two. And what we're gonna do is go down to landscape material, 
Now we're gonna type down the one we made, which is YouTube material for our auto material. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our how to use auto foliage video. It's basically all we're doing right now is setting up the material for that. All right, so if you remember at this point, I actually need to go back into landscape mode, go to paint, and we'd have to add all of these again. So I'm just gonna add the first one, but you'd have to do that for each one of these. And now it has um, a material. You can see it's since I didn't do all of them, there's a clear difference in the uh, shaders and material. Slightly different. Anyways, you can see, let's take a look at how just how large this is in comparison. So it would be hard to manually shape all this, or it wouldn't be hard, but it would take a lot more effort to manually shape all this than it does to pull a landscape from a height map. That's why uh, kind of procedural generation and height map generation for landscapes can be very useful. And then you can have more than one landscape, so you can still come in here and manually tweak them. I mean, even if you use a height map like I just did, you can still come in here with the sculpt tool and adjust it however you see fit. Uh, so really the sky's the limit. This is a useful way to add some dynamic and interesting landscapes to your game or whatever you might be using Unreal for. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, learned something, and if you were able to follow along and do the success, hopefully I have earned your uh, subscription, like, comment, whatever that may be. You can also check out our Patreon if that's up your alley. Uh, we will be adding blueprints to that once we get there where it's basically plug and play code snippets so be sure be sure to check that out all of that goes to making more videos and to the development of our game well anyways guys i appreciate all of you and we'll see you in the next video